Welcome to Electron Online and in this next example we're going to find the area between those two very familiar functions the sine of x and the cosine of x. So let's grab these and see what that looks like. Also on the left and the right side they'll be bounded by the line x equals 0 and the line x equals pi over 2. So if we grab this, this is what this would look like. The sine of x looks like this and the cosine of x starts up here and comes down like this and onward. And of course since we're bounding it by the line x equals 0, that is the y-axis, so this is x equals 0, and the line x equals pi over 2, and pi over 2 would be right there, this is pi over 2, and so we get this line right there. And so we're finding the area between these two functions, but right away you notice something strange. Notice that on this half between 0 and pi over 2, so between 0 and pi over 4, you find that this function is higher than this function, but on the other side, it's this function now becomes higher than this one. So what if you kind of ignore that, okay? And you say, okay, not a problem. Uh, I'm going to call the, this function, I'll call this y1. So this is y1, that's the upper function right there. And I'll call this y2, which is this function right there. And so if I'm going to find the area, which is this area right there and this area right there, all right? What I can do is I can say, okay, I'm going to start a small little area element. And this area element right there, we can call that dA. And that dA is equal to the height of that rectangle, which is the upper minus the lower. The upper, of course, would be y1, and the lower would be y2. So it would be y1 minus y2. That's the height times the width, which is a small dx. And then all, I'm, all I need to do is to find the total area. I'm simply going to integrate uh, my dAs from the left limit to the right limit. The left limit would be x equals 0. The right limit would be x equals pi over 2. If you do it that way, you're going to get a problem because notice that here the functions are flipped and if you don't take that into account, something very strange is going to happen. So watch. So we have area is equal to integral of all little da's from x equals 0 to x equals pi over 2. And the da's, of course, is the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of y1 minus y2 times dx, and of course we can integrate y's and x's together, so we have to then find the equivalent of these functions in terms of x. So here we get this is equal to the integral from 0 to pi over 2. y1 is the cosine of x, and that's why I like to use subscript, so I don't lose track of which function is which. So y1 is the cosine of x minus y2, which is the sine of x and times dx. All right, so, so what ahead. is the integral of the cosine of x? Well, I know that the, that the derivative is from the sine of x is the cosine of x, so the integral of the cosine, you give that the sine. So the integral of the cosine is the sine of x. And since the derivative of the sine of x is the cone of, cosine of x, the integral of the sine of x must be the negative cosine of x. So we get the minus times the minus cosine of x. And then if we have to evaluate that from 0 to pi over 2, so from 0 to pi over 2, of course, the minus times the minus gives you a plus. So let's plug in the upper limits. The sine of pi over 2, that's equal to 1. The cosine of pi over 2 is equal to 0, so that would be plus 0. And then we subtract from that when we plug in the lower limits. The sine of 0 is 0. And then uh, plus, because minus times minus a plus, and the cosine of 0 is 1. Now notice what happens. Here we have 1 minus 1, which is 0. Question mark. How do we get 0 when we clearly can see that there's an area between the functions? However, what happens is, since the order of the functions reversed on the second half of this, on the right side of this area right there, then we're going to get a negative result for this area because now the functions are reversed and this negative will cancel out this positive and that's why we end up with zero. So what we need to do instead is we actually need to do this in two steps. We need to integrate it from zero to the halfway point. The halfway point would be pi over four, Oop, four, and then we have to integrate from pi over four to pi over halves with the two functions reversed. So what we get then instead is that the area is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to pi over 4. We're going to go halfway of this very same function, which is y1 minus y2 times the x. And then we're going to add to that the integral going from pi over 4 to pi over 2. 
and now the two functions are going to be reversed, so now it's going to be y2 minus y1 times dx to get the second half of the area. Notice what we did here. It was y1 minus y2 for the left side, and then since the two functions reverse, this now becomes the upper function, which, notice, let's see here, that would be y2, and the lower function would be y1, so now we go y2 minus y1. Now we'll get the right answer. So let's do this again. So this will be equal to the integral of, uh, that would be the cosine of x minus the sine of x dx integrated from 0 to pi over 4 plus the integral from pi over 4 to pi halves. And here we're going to get the sine of x minus the cosine of x times dx. All right, now we can go ahead and integrate those two. So the first integral will be exactly the same. So this will be equal to what we had here, the sine of x minus times the minus plus the cosine of x evaluated from 0 to pi over 4 plus the second integral. The integral of the sine of x is the minus cosine of x. So it would be uh, minus cosine of x. Uh, the cosine, integral of cosine of x is the sine of x, but it would be minus the sine of x evaluated from pi over 4 to pi over 2. All right, so now what we'll get when we evaluate this, when we plug in the upper limit, we get this is equal to the sine of pi over 4, that would be 0 0.707, square root of 2 over 2. Well, maybe I can write it like that. Let me write it as a square root of 2 over 2. That might be easier. So we get the square root of 2 over 2 plus the cosine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2, minus when I plug in the lower limit, the sine of 0 is 0, and the cos and uh, when I plug in the lower limit here, that would be uh, minus 1, because we're subtracting, right? It's minus 0, minus 1, because when we plug in the lower limits, we have to subtract. All right, let me write it like this. That's better. So minus, when I plug in the lower limit, is 0 plus 1. There we go. Plus, now we do this integral. Plug in the upper limit. Pi over 2, well, the cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so it would be 0. Minus, we plug in uh, pi over 2 for this, we get 1. Minus, we plug in the lower limit, we get minus the square root of 2 over 2. And here we get minus the square root of 2 over 2. All right, almost done. Now, I'm going to give myself a little bit more room. Otherwise, I can't finish the problem. So let's get rid of this. There we go. So combining everything that we have here, this gives me the square root of 2 minus 1 for this portion. And here we have minus 1. And a minus times a minus gives me a plus. So another plus square root of 2. So finally, when we combine all that, this gives me 2 times the square root of 2 minus 2. And that would be the final area between those two functions and again if I call this positive area and this positive area combined we'll get this as an answer. And remember you need to evaluate this in two pieces otherwise since the function reverse you're going to get a negative area here which would cancel out that area there like I showed you in the beginning and that's how we do that.